welcome to Teach Me Maths. My name is Jonathan Hicks. Today we're doing histograms. Now histograms are very similar to bar charts and a lot of people confuse the two. They do look like bar charts, but there's a couple of crucial differences between histograms and bar charts that you should be aware of. But before we can launch into drawing our histogram, we need some data. So give me a moment to draw up a table of data here and then I'll explain how we construct the histogram. All right, there we go, there's our table of data. What this represents is, um, I imagine I've gone around and asked a bunch of people to fill out a questionnaire, and as well as collecting the results of the questionnaire, whatever that was about, I've secretly timed them all to see how long it took them to fill out the questionnaire. And then I've recorded these results here. Now this is grouped data. What you wouldn't want to do is, imagine we had a table here where we just listed all of the different possible numbers of minutes it took them to complete the questionnaire. So this is the time in minutes again. Time in minutes. So maybe one, if we had one, two, three, four, five, six, etc., then you might find one person was very quick and they took three minutes. And then a couple of people took five minutes. And then a couple more people took six minutes. And one person took seven minutes. And you'd end up with the, all the different frequencies very spread out because there are so many different options here. So in that case, because it's continuous data, because we're dealing with time, which is on a continuous scale, you're much better off grouping the data, which is what we've done here. So the first group here goes from naught to four. So anybody who took between zero and four minutes will get grouped into that group. In this case, the frequency tells you there are four people who took between naught and four minutes to complete the questionnaire. If you're wondering about this inequality sign in the middle, go and watch the inequalities video if you're not sure about those. Um, but essentially, it just means that the time, t here, has to sit between 0 and 4. The little or equal to there means it can be equal to 4, but it can't be equal to 0. So for this group here, the time is between 4 and 6. Can't be exactly 4 minutes, but it could be exactly 6 minutes. It just allows us to avoid the overlapping boundaries problem, which you can sometimes get with continuous data. So, not like this. We want to group the data like that. So we need to turn this into a histogram. Now what I'm going to do first is actually draw a bar chart out of this data, which is a bad idea. You don't want to do a bar chart, but I'm going to show you what a bar chart will look like so you can see the differences between the bar chart and the histogram. The reason you don't want to do a bar chart here is because the groups here are not all the same width. Yeah, this first one goes from 0 to 4, it has a width of 4. This from 4 to 6 has a width of 2. 6 to 8 is 2, 8 to 10 is 2, and 10 to 16 is 6. You've got a really wide group at the top there. When you do a bar chart, the bar should all be the same width, and the group should all be the same width as well. But on a histogram, it doesn't matter. And histograms are ideally suited to situations like this, where you might want to have the groups of different widths. So give me a second to draw a bar chart here, and then we'll talk about it. All right, so there's a bar chart based on this data. So we've got the frequency at the side, the time in minutes along the bottom, and I've just drawn bars where the height of each bar corresponds to the number of people in that group. So the first bar, the 0 to 4 bar, has a height of 4, the second bar goes up to 12, the third bar goes up to 10, etc. And the crucial thing here is, having drawn my bars the right heights, I've then just labelled the bars. So this is the 0 to 4 bar, this is the 4 to 6 bar, the 6 to 8 bar, etc. And that's a bar chart, and bar charts are really best for discrete data. Because for discrete data, these spaces in between the bars don't have any meaning. If we were doing colours of cars or something, if it was blue, black, green, yellow, whatever, then the spaces wouldn't mean anything between the different colours, you just have a list of possible options. But for continuous data like this, if this goes up to 4, and this one carries on from 4, then it's a bit strange having a gap here. You really want to scale along the bottom so that you can read off the values, and then the points between the bars would have some meaning. But on a bar chart, you just can't do that. You have to label the bars, and the spaces between the bars have no meaning. But if we've got continuous data like this, if we've got time where it goes smoothly from 0 through to 4, and then from 4 smoothly through to 6, and they're all joined up, then you're much better off with a histogram. So, 
Let me turn this into a histogram, which will look quite similar in some ways, and then I'll explain the key differences between them. Well, I'm going to leave it there before I draw the bars and to show you how this works. The key difference between a histogram and a bar chart is that the scale along the bottom on a histogram is a smooth scale. We're not going to draw bars and label them. We have a smooth scale, so it goes 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, etc., all the way up to 16, because our highest time went up to 16. And we're just numbered along the scale. And every point on this scale has a valid meaning. So if I take the point halfway between 8 and 10, that's going to be exactly 9. That might be 8.5 or something. And every single point along here has a meaning that you can read off. The other slight thing to notice is that up the side here, instead of frequency, we've got frequency density. You don't need to worry about that too much, but I'll explain why you can't just call it frequency once you've drawn the bars in. So now we draw the bars in. The first one has got to go from 0 to 4, and it has a frequency of 4. The frequency density will be slightly different. Let me draw the bar and I'll explain how it works. But it's going to go from 0 to 4 here. So it's going to actually look like that. On a histogram, the thing that represents how many people you've got in that group, the frequency, is not the height of the bar, it's the area of the bar. So we need the area of this bar to be 4. So if it has a width of 4, because it goes from 0 to 4, 0 to 4, then I actually want the height to be 1, because 1 times 4 gives me 4, so the area of that bar will be of the 4 that we need. Let's draw the next one. So from 4 to 6 this time, and the area of the bar needs to be 12. So from 4 to 6 is a width of 2, which means my height in this case wants to be 6, because 6 times 2 would give me 12. Now, when you draw this, you need to make sure the bars touch. They should exactly touch. You don't want to be leaving a little gap between them or anything like that. So from the 4, I'm actually just going to carry on from this point here, straight up with the next bar. Let me try and draw that in for you. Okay, more or less. Obviously, you're going to do this with a ruler when you do it properly on graph paper. So, the width is 2, the height is 6. So the area of that bar would be 12, which corresponds to a frequency of 12. So the next one, the 6 to 8 bar, it has a frequency of 10. 6 to 8 is a width of 2. So if the area is going to be 10 and the width is 2, the height needs to be 5. So from 5, I just carry on across from there and then straight down. So that the bars touch exactly. There's no gaps between the bars. So the next one. 8 to 10 has a height of 7, sorry, not a height, an area of 7. So 8 to 10 is a width of 2. So if the area is going to be 7 and the width is 2, I want the height to be half as much as 7. So it's actually going to go to 3.5 here. So at 3.5, I go across and then down. Yeah. So 3.5, which is how high it is, times 2, the width, will give me 7 for an area of 7, because the frequency is 7. The last one from 10 to 16, the frequency should be 3, so the area should be 3. And that's going to be all the rest of my graph here. Now the width is 6, the area needs to be 3. So if you think about what you need to times 6 by to get 3, in this case it's got to be a half. So the height of my bar needs to actually be a half. So 0, 1, half is about here. So I need to go across like that for my final bar. So it looks quite strange, the histogram. It's like a bar chart, but the bars don't have to be the same width. And the height of the bar doesn't tell you how many people are there. It's the area of the bar that matters. And that's why this is called frequency density, because it's the amount of space that's in it, the density, if you like, rather than just the height of the bars. So that's how you construct the histogram. Um, obviously, you need to put a title on it, like with all charts, to illustrate what it's about. So just give me a moment to do that. All right, so there we go. So again, the, the title is descriptive. It says it's a histogram rather than a bar chart. And it tells you what it's about. It's the time taken to complete a questionnaire by a group of people. 
Now, one important thing to point out here, you might wonder why you want to choose a histogram rather than a bar chart. So the first thing is, if you've got continuous data, like time, then you really should be using a histogram rather than a bar chart. Um, you don't have to make the bars different widths. If the groups here are all the same width, you can still do a histogram with it. That's fine. It's just they don't have to be the same width. Now, I mentioned earlier about this idea of why you might ha want to have some groups wider than others. In this case, if you had, maybe there was one person who took one minute to complete it, another person who took three minutes or something, and there's a few spread out like that, and then a lot of people in this middle group, you'd ex you know, this is the average time to take in the uh, to complete the questionnaire, obviously it depends on how long the questionnaire is, but in this case somewhere between four and eight minutes was probably the average. But you might have found a couple of people really struggled to complete the questionnaire for some reason and they took ages over it and they might be right up here. Now if you did a standard bar chart with this, if you've got a couple of people right up at the top end and a big gap down here, maybe there's one person here or something, then it looks a bit strange, if I just do a quick bar chart in the middle here, to have a few bars down the bottom end here, and then a big gap, and then one or two bars right up at the top end. And so to avoid that problem, you can group the data. If we just grouped all of that section together, then it would end up with a very wide bar that is not very high because there's not many people there, but it makes more sense on histogram. You still get this joined up feel about the whole graph. You can see it peaks there and it tails off there without having this odd gap, which could be really long potentially in the middle. So that's another reason why you might want to do a histogram. So from your table of data then, if it's continuous data with groups, it's ideal for using histogram. If the groups aren't the same width, you really must use a histogram. You can't do a bar chart if the groups are not the same width. You must have a continuous scale along the bottom, which you label, including the units. You draw your bars over the top, remembering that it's the area of the bar that tells you how many people are in it not the height of the bar. So be very careful working out how high each of the bars should be. Give it a good title and you've got a histogram. My name is Jonathan Hicks and you're watching Teach Me Maths.